Ladies and gentlemen, meet the new Countryman. The largest in Mini's lineup, it's a crossover with a surprising amount of space, but sits close to the ground, which helps maintain Mini's signature go-kart ride and drive. Now, this being the biggest, this SD is equipped with a two-liter turbo diesel engine, which makes it almost, if not as green, as this grass. Now, at first glance, you might think that it's the exact same car. You'd be right, except for some subtle differences. Like for example, the headlamp, the front grille, even the chrome accents around the fog lamps. However, the big change comes at the back on how you open the boot. See, in the previous model, you'd flip the emblem to open the boot, which I thought was pretty cool. Unfortunately, that has been replaced with an ordinary latch. The differences inside, however, are a bit more profound. Now, sure, there are still enough toggle switches in here to rival a nuclear sub, but the main difference would be is that the speedometer is no longer in the center. It's now in front of the driver, paired with a tachometer. Other changes include a heads-up display, the size and shape of the vents, the master controls for the audio system is right here. Oh, and these things that extend from the seat so that taller people those that are about twice my size won't have a problem at all. In the back, the cup holders are no longer on the floor. They're here in the center armrest. Those two cup holders have been replaced by two air vents, which is great because if you look at the amount of leg room and head room coupled with the air that you've got back here, you could fit a polar bear drinking a Coca-Cola back here and he'd be sound as a pound. The trunk is also pretty deep, which can fit a child stroller with room for more. With its power lift tailgate and flat no lip rear bed, loading cargo is easy as pie. The real gem of this car is in its DNA, with its signature go-kart driving experience. And now that there is a two-liter twin-power turbo diesel engine up front, <laughs> the fun factor of driving this car has just doubled. Now, while that engine is pushing out 190 horsepower, from inside the cabin, you won't be able to tell it's a diesel because it's that quiet, comfortable, and cool in here. Additionally, your line of sight is unimpeded, even though you've got a marginally smaller windshield and windows. Just on its default mode, the engine and 8-speed transmission are very responsive to every push on the pedal. But once you switch it into the sport mode, oh man, it's another story. The engine holds it at higher revs, obviously, so that it's perfect for roads like this, with tight turns and great elevations that you wish would never end. <laughs> and since it's a mini, regardless of its countryman size, you turn the steering wheel and it goes. Woo! This second generation countryman is the first mini with a diesel engine. Let's hope it's not the last because it makes for a very good car even perfect for those that want to keep the mini lifestyle and yet I bring the kids along for a ride. At 3,400,000 Philippine pesos, however, I'd expect it to have power folding side mirrors and power seats. It doesn't. Yes, yes, I know the whole point of a mini is that you can customize it any way that you want. In fact, if you wanted, I don't know, Mocha Uson's face on the roof, you could. Why? I have no idea. But the whole point is that for that price, you'd expect all those things to be there. So I say, fault the taxation system of the country for its price because there's no way you're going to fault this car for its fun or its drive. 